Hello everybody, I'm Paul Uliberry. I'm joined by AJ Risley, and together we're bringing you commentary for the 2019 Masters Cup. Mm. This is Par Save Production. AJ, what do we got here, buddy? We got the final round on the De La Viega golf course. <laughs> and we're going to jump right into it. Hole one, nice 455-foot par three. No real OB to speak of yet. We'll get to that. Don't worry. There's plenty of OB on this course. But really, this hole plays straight to the right. And you can see there's a little bit of a cliff, a little bit of a drop off on that right side. The cart path on this hole is safe. And leading off our card, Matt Orem. Yeah, and as you can see, those flags to the right kind of, kind of, the wind's kind of picking up. Um, it was it was a little bit dead early in the day, and mm -hmm. then you know towards uh, towards those featured cards, the wind kind of started to pick up a little bit on hole one. So yeah. we see Matteo drop the roller down. You'll see a few of those, maybe a couple Anheuser's. I love that roll tide for the roller. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Big Germ, you probably know this guy. I've heard of him. Me too. He typically plays very well on this course. I know I've seen in the past him make uh, some monster putts, and I think one of the rounds that I've seen mm. was like combined 400 foot worth of putts or something Jeez. from the card. It was That's pretty good. Yeah, hopefully we see that today. Third on the card, size Elmore. No stranger to these parts. No, and he's no, a NorCal guy. Yeah, no stranger to these featured cards as well. He's Dude. been playing very well this year. Very well. Oh, and this guy, Rick. Laying down a quick roller. And he's trying to get this thing to get up there and kind of burn out. Oh, on that same stump as Matty O? That was a really, really impressive roller. We'll see if that tree kind of is obstructing him or if he's, you know, got a more wide open putt. Here's Sias running it. Ooh. Jeremy lining up from about, I'd say, 45 feet. Mm. Yeah, and this is, a, this is a pretty difficult hole. It's coming in at seventh hardest on the day, averaging .05 strokes over par. So, oh, he got a, he got a chain, just or maybe just a link. <laughs> yeah, and that's a that's a pretty funny miss because he's straddling out to the left and he probably thinks there's no possible way mm. that i miss right right you know what i mean oh yeah and then, i've been there yeah that's the worst way to miss right there because you're like if i just barely miss the tree i'll make it and matteo looked like he didn't play the wind correctly there and just kind of dropped out of the sky yeah yeah the wind definitely seems to be a factor right now that flag is moving there's it almost Debris blew that. Flying yeah, the almost air. blew that little putt out of Rick's right there. Right, yeah. Oof. Looks like we're gonna clean up a little star par though to start it off, which is not bad. Not bad. You, I don't feel like there was probably a lot of bogeys on this one, but there were. There was one, two, three. There are the same amount of bogeys as there were birdies. Six. Oh, but there, you go. there were two double oh. bogeys as well. Did Whoa! You see that thing pop out? <laughs> <laughs> Rode the rim there for a hot sec. And this is the type of course where you can really get on fire in this chase card. You know, they're they're pretty close to the leaders. Yeah, you're right. They are they're within striking distance. And on this course, I mean, anything's possible. I think there's some big swings to be had out here. But over to hole two, 360 feet. No real OB to speak of again. Maybe the road on the left. But behind the basket and the right side of that fairway, there is a little bit of a cliff again. So be careful. Yeah, and again, they're dealing with a, a slight bit of headwind here, so... 
definitely gonna see something like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was yeah. Looks like it really got a hold of his disc and turned it right over. I'm not. I've never been over there to the right, so I'm not so sure of what kind of danger there is. But it doesn't look good. Is that a little humble brag there? You know, I, I've never been over to the right, but I always go <laughs> deep left, so into that <laughs> into that shul. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, get in! Yikes! Skipped it off the cart path. It looked like almost right into the hole. Car path is safe again on this hole. Unless you skip it over the bucket down the hill. Yeah, then, right. <laughs> Indirectly, not safe. Yeah, and you can you can see mm. that, you know, that breeze is really catching those... Um, the Anheuser's? Right, yeah, those righty flex shots and kind of pushing them to the right. So I like this play by Ricky. He's just going to, well, no. He didn't swing it out far enough left, it looks like. So... Mm. Yeah, some interesting plays from them. I I've, don't think any of them really made the right win uh, read, except for Germ. He kind of caught a bad break with that cart pass. Right, skip, but just the, came in a little bit too hot. And he might still have a putt down there. I think they might be looking for Matty O's right here. Oh, no, maybe Ricky. Your typical approach, just put it really close. You can't really run this one because of how crazy that slope is. Right. It's up on a little knoll there. And on a windy day, yeah, you just want to have a nice little tap in. Just like that. Off the lock for... Oh, Jerm actually does maybe that, have a... Maybe that was Matty O. Yeah. Well done. You can see him give that nice fist pump there. That'll kind of give you a little perspective of how tough that putt really was. I mean, it doesn't look that bad from this camera angle, but believe me, that's really high up. And with yeah. that right to left cross, when anything can happen with the putt coming up exposed like that, so it was a really great putt. And looking at the stats here on UDisc Live, the average. Average score to par is negative 0.26. So the field is averaging one birdie per card, and there you go. Germ did just that. It's funny how it works out that way sometimes. <laughs> Good bit of focus and concentration. Oh, and he hops Matt and Ricky. And then going over to the hardest hole on the course for the day. Yeah, hole three, par four, 720 feet. And this is kind of when the, the the OB theme starts to pick up a little bit more. We've got OB, cart path and beyond on the right. There's a short bunker in the fairway on the left side. And then coming up to this green is treacherous. Bunker, big old bunker on the left side of the basket. Green on the right side of the basket and it slopes downwards towards that bunker on the left. All sorts of danger. And to top it off, they're still dealing with that headwind. Mm. This bunker on the left really came into play, I felt like, for the for the card because yes. you really don't want to flip it out over that OB to the right, which was typical on the miss pre on the previous hole, so people were kind of hyzering out right into that bunker. Um, Sias, though, really putting a lot of trust in that disc. Yeah. Very Great well low flex shot. Yeah, yeah, very well executed right there. And that's and this is a pretty long hole. It's like 720 feet. That second shot, if you and the green's pretty tight, so a lot of players are going to try to bite off quite a bit on the drive. And Ricky is just unhinging his jaw. Jeez, that was a huge bite. That was that was huge. I mean, he ate the whole burger in one gulp. Delicious. Almost. <laughs> Delicious. Oh. Yep, and there's that. He might need a napkin. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> there's that bunker I was afraid of. And I saw this a few times as well. Uh, oh, right on the green? 
yeah, I felt like people were really playing to that green side and not getting the push off it to the left, like in the practice rounds, just because of that left left to right crosswind. Mm -hmm. And Matt was playing from in the bunker. They are hazards, not normal OB hazards. So play from where it lies, take a stroke. Comes up left of the bunker near the green. And you can see how pinched this oh. basket is. It's right on the um, left side of that green, right side of that bunker. So you really have to feather something something in there. Oh, wow. And Ricky was less than a foot from having just the p ideal shot. Yeah, Looked he kind of like knew it out of lip. his hand, though, like that he had messed up. Yeah, same with Germ. Because it's such a fine shot, like you you have to be so critical of look how close that is to the bunker. I mean, you have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the fact that the the lip on the bunker is so high, it makes that shot even more difficult. That might be the hardest part about that shot. Oh, Man, yeah, that that hurts after just the probably one of the best drives of the day. Great putt by Germ, back-to-back -back big putts. Nice. Very nice putt. Kind of keeps his round going, you know. One Little. down through three is re is actually really good on this course. As we see the rest of the card, um, kind of struggling a bit on that hole. But like you said, it's playing as the hardest hole in the course. Right. So. Everybody went OB. At one point or, or another. I wonder, I wonder if Craig will ever come up with a, a graphic for, for what Germ just did after that putt. You know, a little par save. Oh, I like that, yeah. <laughs> Germ with a little par save. There. Par save! <laughs> All right, <laughs> hole four. Par four, 606 feet. There, again, well... Maybe not again, but there's OB on the right, that cart path that you see on the whole graphic there. And then there's a tree line on the left. The most danger, the da most dangerous part of this hole is this bunker that we're flying over right now, um, right next to the basket. So everyone's gonna be trying to just bomb another one right out the, in the fairway and then figure out some kind of approach to give themselves the closest putt that they can. Yeah, and that, that, uh cart path that's to the right really doesn't come into play on this hole because now we've switched to almost uh, a crosswind that's really going to kind of help you uh, right. more than hurt you on this hole. So you'll see. So again, you're even saying this, that even this never... shot, you know, he really turned that over, but really no danger of going out of bounds at all. Right. Ricky and Germ definitely have the power to put this near Ooh. that bunker that was huge huge but now look at this touchy little upshot he has oh yeah kind of like it it's a it's about a 30 foot slope on the other side and if you come up short obviously you're right in the hazard so pretty tricky upshot yeah tricky hole in general i really like this design it's it, it's a pretty soft par four but it there's it a lot of danger involved and a lot of creativity that is required and wow right touch that combine was... power with touch i think landing your drive on the left side of the fairway uh just a couple feet short for ricky but landing your drive on the left side of the fairway like matty o just did supposedly gives him a better look than what rick had on the right side but matt again just like rick so close but in the bunker yeah i think the really the, the miss you, <laughs> sorry <laughs> the miss you want to have is deep and so i'm surprised to see them both kind of come up short really trying to absolutely park the hole you can go a little about 30 feet past have that tailwind putt up the hill it's really mm -hmm. not that difficult obviously requires a very skilled putt but i can kind of see what they're going for if i miss short guaranteed bar right that's true. I like I like Germ's play. I kind of did a similar thing where I made sure not to be in the bunker and to give and to keep the birdie hopes alive. 
And Germ does just that with a confident putt. Sias, man, that second shot was masterful. Yeah. Oh, and also Matt Orem, par save. <laughs> Moving over to hole five, par three, 320 feet. And this is where we really see the OB start to pick up. OB green just to the left of the basket, OB right, cart path and beyond to the right of the basket. And it's real close and it slopes away towards that cart path. Low ceiling off the tee, what do you think? Yeah, if you got the sidearm and you're a right-handed player, I suggest doing this right here. You take it out towards that green, skip it off of it, and hope that you get nice soft ground play, which and Germ does Germ do. Germ does to perfection. If you're a backhand player like Sias, I say pack a lunch because this is a really difficult shot. And he puts himself That's a really, in position, really good yeah. shot. Yeah, it's a low ceiling, so to get that nose angle to where it's going to crest over and ride right while getting the distance is really tough. And here's Ricky getting a nice... Nice play there. Yeah, we'll sh we're seeing three sidearms off the tee here. Yeah, if only you disc had a, a stat for that. Oh, I would like forehand oh. or backhand. Oh. That's a bad break. I mean, that was a pretty good shot, and it took a really, really bad bad roll. Yeah, it looked like his it looked like Matteo's sidearm is just like a little bit softer than what we saw at a German Rick. Maybe a tiny bit different nose angle, so he got more of like a – I don't know. Not really a flare skip. Oh. And it's set. Okay, good. Oof. And that's really a great tee shot from where size was. So that gives you a really good perspective of how hard it is from, you know, the second camera angle looked like he was pretty close, but he was still 45 feet away. Yeah. It's And you can't really even see the basket from the tee. You have to throw it and then kind of run out from behind the tree just to see the basket. So... And really a good break not to go out of bounds on his putt. Usually you see any miss at all on this hole. Do Coming something, from yeah. left to right, yeah. It's probably going OB over that cart path. That's a, a pretty big slope. Yeah, I think the rain um, the night before helped. There was a lot of it. A couple birdies from two of the best sidearm throwers in the game. That's, that's just to be expected, and Jeremy Colling's putting together a pretty pretty decent front nine. Hole six. Man, that ravine that we're about to fly over right now, that is all OB, and I wonder how many discs are down there because you throw, you end up in that ravine, and it's just pretty much gone. You got a Mando to contend with, that right side tree. Our players are going to have to go left of it. There's a green, there's treachery all around the basket or at least on the right side and this is a great looking shot gets a soft skip yeah I'm guessing Ricky will do a little bit of read off that and take it a bit wider a little too wide maybe or is this perfect oh just maybe a foot or two from perfection Caught yeah, the, he caught the wrong side of that little that little berm there. Yeah, and because I think of all the rain that we got the day before, these uh, greens, If you it, like you said, if you catch that other slope, it's going to dig into that mud and really not give you a good skip. And that's actually safe right there, so. Mm -hmm. Really tough backhand again. You really have to get something wide and trust that to come back around. Got to get some late turn on it, too. And Matt. Oof. Yeah. Around the Mando, that's that's the first step on the checklist there. Ooh, Sias faked me out on that first one. <laughs> Woo! He almost faked out the basket. Oh. Wow. That's that was that was a long ways out to give that such a confident run. That I mean that stuff behind the basket is not fun. And like you said, Jeremy just kind of putting together a really good stretch of holes right now.
not really being affected by, I mean, I guess I can't even say weather because we look at the conditions right now and they look absolutely perfect on this hole. It looks nice. It's still a little bit chilly. <laughs> not too much wind. The rain has cleared up. And Ricky's just really close to having a good round as well. Just like, you know, probably combined five inches from being a, a <laughs> lot under par. Yeah. A lot of close putts and some very close OBs. Crazy thing about that hole is it averaged 2.93, just barely under par. But really, there are a lot of birdies. About a third of the field got the birdie, but there are also a lot of bogeys and double bogeys because of that Mando. And this is one of the trickier holes on the course. Hole 7, par 4, 567 feet. You see that cart path to the right of that is out of bounds. Off the tee. Off the tee. And then once you establish an inbounds play, then you're going to go to this island green right here that we just saw the camera kind of fly over. So really a placement shot. This shot that Germ's throwing right here. Yeah, I mean, he's just trying to he's just trying to put himself in bounds. I mean, it really if he's short, it he can still throw a pretty decent sidearm and get himself up on the green for a putt. If he's long, that leaves him with a nice straight shot, perhaps a backhand hyzer. All he's got to do is get it in bounds. And huh. Matt goes for the long long play out into the open and so now he'll have a pretty straight shot to the green, maybe somewhere around 300 feet, maybe a little less. And this. See, and I don't really down. like this play. I mean, he plays it perfectly, but he's throwing a shot that's coming straight towards that out of bounds where, right. you know, like you can play out as wide as you possibly want. Sias really biting off a lot right here. Oh, and on just about any other day, that's fine. Yeah. And so. I'm, I'm, I just don't understand. You know why not play far left? You sure. like all that safe to the left, and then we'll see him go pretty far left. Now watch his approach. Like he didn't take any time on that. That was a really easy play. He's gonna have a wide open shot from there into that green. Right, and he's and not even too far left on the tee shot. Sure, and obviously we all know he's not trying to throw it out of bounds. I'm just you know. A little bit confused about those those plays and germ is that inbounds i i don't really think it is okay so that was very unfortunate because that's a pretty wide open shot you see like matteo right here throwing right at it going a bit deep i don't know if that's inbounds either uh, that let's see green flag oh he's gonna have to check it i mean there's those logs there i can't Oh no, it slid past the paint line. So now oh we see gosh. Sias's approach, and that's the one that he took zero time on. Right. And he took, I don't know, I mean, who knows how much time he took on that because. Fairly you know, easy upshot. But yeah, exactly. He might as well have taken no time. And Jerem playing provisional, maybe? Or he. this means that he was out of bounds. Yeah. Okay. Someone's going to have to fix that chain. On the basket there. Rick, what's up? Yikes. Okay, he's fine. That was that was heading for OB, and then it panned out a little bit. Dang. That was a tough break for Matt. Yeah, so, so Jerm was inbounds oh, right was, there. Huh, interesting. Wow. What a turn of, of events. Ooh. I like that still shot right there. Mm. That's nice. Great putt right on the pole. Dang. Nice putt by Rick. So a couple birds. Yeah. A couple birds, a couple OB shots. Yeah, Maddie's struggling a bit here. It's quite surprising seeing how, you know, the day before he had the hot round in those conditions. He was, you know, yeah. he couldn't do no wrong. Um, 
just shows you how things can be different from day to day. Let's see if he can put something together on, you know, the back part of the course. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's some focus right there. He's giving that bath basket a death stare. Germ, five down through seven. Rolling. And we will roll on over to hole eight, 332 feet, teeing off from the cart path. Cart path is an OB river all the way down the fairway. And this tree that you see on the right here with that red arrow, you gotta go left of it, mandatory. And really it's just that low, low ceiling that is the biggest challenge on this hole. Yeah, this is one of my favorite holes to throw back in just because it requires such precision with the height that you throw it on. Right. Uh, if you're a little bit high, you can drop straight down out of bounds. A little bit low, you catch the curb. If you have the big... And you can go way high. Thumber. Two meters, which is in, a, in play <laughs> in this tournament. That's unfortunate, man. Nobody really likes that rule. <laughs> Some people do. I don't think anybody is like, I don't think anyone's in love with it, but, oh, just straight up miss the Mando. Yep. And that's uh, that's kind of what I like about this hole is you're focused so much on the height, you kind of forget that all that to the right is out of bounds as well. Let's see if Maddie can, this is, seems like a shot that he would just dial, uh, oh boy. Whoa. Oh boy. <laughs> That thing just seems got like crunched. a shot that he would dial up, but then it looked good right away. Yeah, that was something. Something happened there. I don't know. It got to be the wind. Is this playing as the second hardest hole in the world? You're so close. It's the third most difficult hole on the course for the day. Oh, and I misspoke. I said that you know to the right over there was OB. But it's just the path. Yeah, the path is is a a river of OB. And yeah, with that Mando, you on a hole like this, typically we would be you know with that low ceiling, we would be looking to swing it out to the right and play it low and get a low skip towards the basket. But yeah, the difficulty of this hole is just having to keep it low but go dead straight at the basket. It's is that's a tough combo. Is Germ's caddy as big as he is? His, he's bigger. He is bigger. I played with him the second round, and I met the guy in San Francisco. Ben is his name. And he does might he, as well move to London and just get it over with. Call him Big Ben. Why not? Yeah, does he play for the Steelers? The Steelers team. couldn't handle him. <laughs> no NFL team can handle him. Here's Maddie up. Matty O trying to clean up. The bogey right there, and he does. Yeah, I think Sias is going to gain a stroke on on the card here with the par. Yeah, that, that hole kind of ate that card up. Yeah, for real. Yeah, a lot of bogey, a lot of birdies on this hole, but also a lot of bogeys, as you can see there. Three from the chase card. Jerem four clear of this of Ricky heading into hole nine par three 515 feet you can see this cart path to the left is out of bounds it's a hazard though okay so, so to the left is the as a hazard out of bounds yeah. so you land anywhere over there you just pitch across and with a penalty stroke and then right. to, yeah and then to the right you can see there's that uh traditional golf green ahead mm -hmm. that's that definitely comes into play especially with turning stuff over um you can see some people hit that gap between those two trees try to play the hyzer line into the into the pin sias looks to have put a really good move on this one this one looks really great oh lovely i didn't see how that finished but it looked close oh gallery likes it heard some claps oh germ turned it over right away Oh, man. E oh, oh, wow. That okay. was fortunate. Nice little spit out there. I don't think that's OB. No. 
Shouldn't be. Oh, just a little overstable for Rick. He said, but he oh, gets up there. Short. And he was right. I mean, but he's in Ricky range. Yeah. He had the he had the line on it and the disc wasn't as overstable as it looked from from back here. Ooh, there I love we go. this. I was hoping somebody played that Heiser line. I like that. That's, That's a real nice. Wow. Yeah. So they were talking about provisionals and such, and then he looks like he found it, which is good. And lays that one up a bit short, though. He's going to have to earn his part right that's, there. Yeah, that's a far shot from where he was. It's a l considerable amount of uphill. Is he trying to spin put this? He is. Oh, no. What? <laughs> oh. Worst case scenario, I guess. Oh, my gosh. It's not. It didn't even like it didn't even roll it just pretty much flew right into the bunker and okay yeah and you can see that the wind kind of picked up and then just kind of died down for maddie here but he just, just didn't make good here's ricky in the puddles <laughs> and i'm pretty sure that blue one is size's drive yes that's just a really good shot. Get. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, Ricky kind of catching some bad breaks on his putts right now. Yeah, he definitely could be getting better breaks. <laughs> better, I mean, he could be, he's really close to, yeah, like you said earlier, really close to putting together a good round. Just the putts are just barely off. Yeah, you can see how, how tough the course is playing right now. and. Mm -hmm. I mean, through nine holes, you know, we see three three of the card really struggling heading into the back nine. And, you know, Jerm has a pretty good score there. Let's see if he can keep that momentum going. Um, Sias at 14, Waisaki at 13, Matty O at 11. So join us on the back nine. Yeah, the back nine should be pretty fun to watch. I'm excited. Are you excited? So excited. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you guys on the back. <laughs>